Hello everyone! Welcome back to my channel. This is a follow-up from my last episode where I was talking about all the things that I think Vue.js does better than React. And frankly, there were quite a number of things that were better. If you haven't seen that video, I encourage you to check it out. It's just the previous one. There's a link down below as well. I figured today I kind of flip that video idea on its head and talk about things that I do not like about Vue.js as a React engineer. I am historically a React engineer. I like to code with React. And despite delving into Vue.js in recent times, I will still be a React engineer. So I wanted to share with you my thoughts on the things that Vue.js does that I very much like the React way better. One of the biggest differences between React and Vue.js is how each library framework approaches writing your UI. With React, uh, it is the loved and appreciated JSX, which I have definitely come to enjoy over the past years of coding in React. I think it's pretty straightforward. Uh, again, I've drunk the Kool-Aid with React, so easy for me to say. But the simple idea with JSX is you have JSX that looks like this, and when it's compiled down, it turns into a function call. And that's kind of like the meat of JSX. Like that, it's as simple as that. Uh, there's a few small gotchas probably, but I've now integrated them so much that it's kind of hard for me to, to even remember what they are. However, when I look at what Vue.js does, Vue.js has a fully blown uh, template syntax for writing your UI. And I found it to be more complicated for me than it needed to be. Uh, interpolating content is similar to React. With Vue, you use double curly braces. With React, you use single curly braces, so not too dissimilar. Um, but where things get a little bit more confusing to me is understanding the magic behind how the Vue.js template syntax works and how React JSX works. So again, React is with JSX, it's literally transforming this into a function call, which in my small human brain, I can understand uh, pretty easily. Uh, with uh, Vue.js, they say that it does compile down to render calls, kind of like JSX, but it's kind of abstracted away from me and not something that I know about at all. Uh, I think that both of them have in common is that the content inside of these templates have to only be JavaScript expressions, which, you know, is a it makes sense for why things work that way. But even with having expressions being the only content that you can put inside JSX and inside uh, Vue.js templates, uh, Vue has actually some more caveats in there where it seems like there's a actual whitelist of globals that you are only allowed to use inside of Vue.js templates, which is probably not a big deal and probably never bites any Vue.js engineer, but just kind of leads me to believe that there's more magic happening with Vue.js templates than with React um, JSX. So it's not bad, uh, but it's definitely different and something that requires, I think, I mean, from my very naive look, maybe it requires a little bit more work to learn the Vue.js template syntax than JSX. But again, I've checked that React Kool-Aid for so long that that might not be true and JSX might actually be just as hard. Where things start to diverge more sharply is when you start talking about Vue.js directives. A directive is a special attribute with the V dash prefix. And essentially it's a way for you to add functionality into templates. Uh, the example here is the uh, V dash if directive. If the scene variable is true, it shows. If it's false, it hides. Um, and then there's also this, you know, bespoke language for using directives in Vue.js. Uh, directives can take arguments. So this is the directive v-bind. The argument is pref. And essentially what this directive is saying is that bind the value in the URL variable to the pref prop or attribute of that element. And again, not terrible, but again, it's just more to learn. That's very and only Vue.js specific. Uh, you can also have dynamic arguments with Vue.js, which lets you kind of change what you're binding things to, which is similar to ES6 uh, dynamic uh, keys on 
on objects. And then lastly, there's also modifiers on directives. In my previous video, I actually hold this up as a strength of Vue.js, which I do believe because you can't do this in React because React is trying to be as close to just JavaScript as possible. But, and because Vue.js has a template syntax that they can create and own and extend how they want, they can add all these niceties into it, but it definitely adds more weight when thinking about writing your Vue.js code. Um, you have this list of directives, which honestly isn't that many, so it's not terrible to learn. Um, one thing I didn't like is the v4 directive syntax, which kind of takes a Python-esque syntax for writing for loops where you can have item index and items and objects. And it's just stuff that's very unique to Vue.js. Like this knowledge is not transferable outside of Vue.js. Whereas with React, because it's trying to be just, you know, a very thin wrapper to the actual DOM, you actually have to learn about on click, on change, on key down, all of these uh, event names that you'd have to use in the HTML itself. So it might be a little bit more confusing to learn because you have to kind of learn the actual like DOM API, but that knowledge is transferable wherever you go. If one day Vanilla.js takes over the world, then you'll be in a good spot with React. With Vue.js, you are definitely in Vue.js land using uh, Vue.js directives. Here is a petty thing that I don't like. So Vue.js has components just like React. You can uh, register them, that's fine. Uh, because Vue.js is a template-based UI language, when you actually want to use components inside of other components, you have to register them. So the example they give here is when you are using a module system like uh, ES modules, you have to import the component and all its declarations, and then in your component you're defining, define it as a component that's accessible to this other component. This, this component B is this, what they're calling this here, which is one import, two lines, and then you have to also then use component A inside your template. So for using one component, you have to kind of touch three lines of code. Uh, this is compared to React, which requires uh, two, <laughs> uh, which is just importing the component and then using it directly. So not a terrible difference, but it's also a, you know, it's not really a restriction, but it's, it's a side effect of it being a template language where you have to actually tell the template compiler that this component exists and how it works so that you can actually use it inside other templates. So nitpicky, but also just kind of rub me the wrong way. Here's another little weird difference between React and Vue.js. Um, when you want to pass, when you want to have a parent communicate to a child in some ways, the way to do that is with uh, passing a function as a prop. So you pass in a function called handle click that a child component can use anywhere it wants and when, and then you can call that function whenever you want. So you just pass down functions, kind of the callback way of doing communication between parent and child seems pretty simple to me. This is as opposed to Vue.js where they encourage you to use events for a way to message from child to parent. So you have here, this is a custom Vue.js component and the parent is using this component and saying that on the enlarged text event, run this expression. And inside this, inside the definition of this blog post component, you're saying that when you click this button to emit this event. And this is not my favorite way of doing things. And I know that Vue.js has added some tooling around this to make it a little bit more concrete what events a component actually can't emit to a parent so that the contract's a little bit more um, strict, but it seems just like another way of doing the same thing which you could do with functions. Like here you can say that this blog post component emits the enlarged text um, event. So you can also argue that, you know, props is how you go from parent to child and events is from child to parent. So I can, I can understand that, but coming from a React world where everything is a prop and nothing is not a prop. And that makes things very um, singular in focus is 
makes more sense to my brain. So this is kind of like a weird difference in how child-parent communication happens between Vue.js and React. It's not, it's not worse, but I'd be curious to see how this feels when I actually code with Vue.js at long stretches of time. I'm sure it scales, especially because the, uh, the tooling built around it, I'm sure it's rock solid because Vue.js's tooling is rock solid, but just seems weird. I, I've been burned by event passing so many times in my past that to see it used here, it just kind of uh, scares me a little bit, but uh, I'm not gonna really pass full judgment on it until I actually delve into it a little bit more. And then speaking of uh, uh, method event names, um, because you are writing templates with Vue.js, when you actually want to reference a method to call in a template, you're passing in a string. So you have here this Vue.js uh, component where you have methods that are exposed, the greet method, and then the template you just kind of pass it in as, as a string. Uh, when I was first looking to Vue.js, I was like, this is garbage. Like you'll have these typos so easily that you won't understand that you wrote, you know, greet with three E's and you'll just have things just break without any reason. But we actually run the Vue.js uh, compiler. It can match and, and know that greet with three E's is not defined as a method. So that's where your error probably is. So in some ways it completely mitigates that issue, but it still just feels weird, this loose coupling. It, it's loose by itself because you have the methods defined over here and they're being referenced in the template, but because of Vue.js tooling, they're able to kind of bridge those gaps to make sure that they're as close together as possible. So it, it saved itself, but on face value, it's a little bit scary to see. And last but not least is the way that Vue.js does changes of data. They have reactivity built into Vue.js by default. It's a way for things to kind of update when things change. The way that it's done in Vue.js is with proxies to make it, you know, easy to know when some property changes to then update anything that's referencing that, that that value is changed. Uh, if you've used Immer, this is the same thing that Immer uses using uh, proxies. But there's all these little gotchas with reactivity that I didn't really enjoy. Um, we actually define state, you have to wrap it in this reactive function to say that this object is reactive. Um, if you wanna use a primitive value, then you have to use ref, which is similar to React's use ref, but different ways to store different types of values, which is a little bit strange to me, ref for primitive values, like booleans, integers, strings, and then reactive for objects. And then what's also kind of strange to me, which is, you know, if you could argue it's strange where it's like a developer, you know, productivity win is that when you use ref by default, the template will to, to reference this value, you actually have to do count dot value because that's it's an object to be able to just do the implementation details. But when you actually use count in the template, you don't have to worry about uh, calling dot value because templates automatically unwraps to the inner value, which is a little bit magical, in my opinion, and not I don't like magic that much anymore in my career. Uh, I can understand it being nice and it kind of hides away some information details for you, but um, it kind of, then it also changes when you have to be aware that implementation exists and when it doesn't. So like when you actually um, use a ref inside of a reactive object, you don't have to worry about it because it's automatically unwrapped. But if you want to then change the value, I think you have to actually call you have to actually uh, count.ref, count.value. You have to actually call count.value to change it. So like if you want to change that value inside of the JavaScript and not inside of the template, then you actually have to be aware to call that value. So a little bit strange. Uh, and then if you want to destructure a reactive object, you have to then, it'll lose reactivity if you do this. So instead you have to then wrap the destructured reference object with two refs which then makes all of these their own refs object with title.value. So it's a lot of this implementation, you know, it's a lot of, you know, nitty gritty implementation details to be aware of, which maybe is hidden more often than I think when actually writing a large view application, but just reading it kind of just, you know, feels like it could be painful to do. Um, this is of course in juxtaposition with use state where you can just store whatever you want and then whatever you call set state with is what the new value is, which is um, a little bit more of an imperative API where you actually say set count, set state, but it's also just simple and kind of hard, I think, to, uh, I mean, I've definitely done it wrong, so it's not impossible, but I 
feel like there's more foot guns here with the uh, reactivity in Vue.js. So again, this is without having delved into it deeply, but just from reading the docs, that's kind of the impression that I get. So that's kind of my list of things that I didn't really enjoy reading about Vue.js as a React engineer. Uh, I'd have to kind of play with Vue.js more to see how those actually feel in practice, because right now I'm just kind of talking about them in theory. Uh, I'd really be curious to hear the pain points that people have. I mean, I see it at work, and I'm sure I'm doing a poor job of remembering the pain points people have with React, but honestly, nowadays it's mostly use effect, which is worthy of its own video talking about the foot guns that exist with use effect. No framework is uh, without their own issues. So React definitely has its own issues to uh, fix and make better for people. But just comparing Vue.js and React, this is the differences that I saw that mm, I still really enjoy React's way of doing things better. That's my video for this week. Hopefully you enjoyed. I will look forward to seeing you again next week with a brand new video. If you're not a subscriber, become one for new videos like this every week in your YouTube inbox. Until then, stay happy. Stay coded.